This is a two lesson project and it's called the Aquaterra Column. In the first part of the lesson, we're going to build a model. Scientists use models to study a lot, a variety of different things. And the model we're going to make, we're going to use it to study an ecosystem. And so your teachers have prepared all the materials. Right now, on everybody's desk, you should have six inch twine that looks like this right here. A six inch piece of twine, a 48 inch piece of twine, which is a little bit longer. Uh, I have the goldfish, the plants, and the snails. And you also need to have two clear, clean bottles that look like this with the cap still on them. And you can either pull off the labels or run it under hot water to get the labels off. We also need your scissors. And your teacher will provide a hole punch. And if you take a look at your worksheet, all the materials you need are right here. This is a model, and it's going to take us uh, a good while to make it. But I learned this from Dr. Paul Williams, who has a book called Bottle Biology. And I'll give you resources where you can look up more information about making habitats and studying living creatures using recycled two-liter bottles. All right, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is we need to uh, drill a hole in the bottom of one of your bottles. We have two bottles. One of them is going to be the aquarium, and one's going to be the terrarium. And there's uh, a variety of ways that we can make this hole. What we're going to end up doing is making a hole in the bottom so we can put a wick, a wick in from the terrarium to the aquarium. Here's a, a drawing of our completed system with our aquarium down here, our terrarium up here, and our cap, which can be turned either way. So what we're going to do first is make a hole in this top terrarium. You can accomplish that with a soldering iron. So I have a soldering iron here that's quite hot. And on the bottom of this one right here, you can see there, uh, you can put it right in the middle if you want. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt a hole for my wick. This is my terrarium. And so carefully melt a hole, you can see, and, uh, and that makes a very nice hole for our terrarium. If that's a bit too daunting for you, a drill with a one quarter inch drill bit. And we can do the same thing. And by drilling it, it takes a little more uh, uh, aim, I guess. Okay, either way, either method you do, we want to end up with one hole. Not to confuse you, I demonstrated that two ways, but you only need a hole in the terrarium, not a hole in the aquarium. All right, so what we're going to do next is we need to cut these bottles off, the tops of them. And this is a pretty important step. If you take a look at this bottle, you notice the top, neck, maybe you call this a shoulder, a body, and a base. What we want to cut is we want to cut, make sure that it is not on the body. Don't cut it here on the body. We want to cut it to about, oh, right about there above. See how this curves down our cut? This is not, we don't want to do it there. And there will be somebody that will cut it there. If you cut it there, the top will actually slide in. Let me make a drawing and show you what I mean by that. Okay, if this is our bottle. There's the base of our bottle. And our bottle actually uh, comes up. This is the body of the bottle. And it curves in. Curves in and up with our cap. Okay? Here is where the body starts. You do not want to cut there. You want to come up here and make your cut along that area right there. Okay? That's pretty important. If you cut it right where the body starts, the cap will fall through. So I've marked mine just above where the body is. And in order to do this, you need to take 
the cap off. I'm going to do this twice. And right about there is where I want it. And I'm going to squeeze it and pinch it together like that. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to start the, the cut. Now if you use the ends of your scissors, that's kind of hard to do. So I just push my scissors in and just make a start. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Okay, I made one cut right here where you can see it, okay? Before we make the cut, we have to reinflate these. And so I like to reinflate them by putting my hand over here and blowing hard to make this pop back out. And when you do that, it pops back out. <clears throat> you can see where I made the cut right about there. Now this next part is pretty important. Most people will put their scissors in and cut across the top. If you do that, it will be jagged. I'm going to show you a different technique. Instead of putting the bottom of my scissors in, I'm going to put the top of my scissors in. And then I'm going to rotate the bottom. I'm going to cut along the bottom. And I try to make it straight. If I cut along the bottom, it makes a straight cut. See, I'm cutting along the bottom, and I'm trying to keep it a, an even cut. And this is my terrarium. It's my terrarium, so you can see that there's the shoulder, and there's where the body is. And if I did that right, I got my two parts. I can put the cap back on. I'll need this part later. Okay, I'm going to repeat that one more time since I made two terrariums. Okay, so you see that I have both my aquarium, my aqua part, and my terrarium. And remember, the terrarium has a hole in it, okay? Our next step is we need to take our hole punch, and we're going to put some holes in these. And I'm going to show you here. You have... the aquarium, which looks like this, okay? So that's the A for aquarium. And you have a terrarium that looks just like it. Except, it has a hole in the bottom of it. Okay, so there's your aquarium, and there's your terrarium. We're going to use the hole punch, and in the terrarium, oh, there's also a lid. You also have a lid. I'm going to put the lid like this upside down so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there's my lid. Okay. We have a lid. I'll put L for lid up here. Now, you're going to use your hole punch, and in the terrarium, you're going to, as far down as the hole punch will go, you're going to make one hole here, and opposite another hole. It's opposite. So the terrarium gets two holes. Okay? Here, the aquarium, we're going to put eight holes in it at the top. Same deal. So opposites, opposites. Make sure we have eight holes in here. One, two, three, four, five, and maybe one more over here. Eight holes, all right? The lid, two holes. Make sure you have them opposite each other, okay? So in your terrarium, two holes. Lid, two holes. Your aquarium, eight. And remember, your terrarium is the one that has the hole coming down. Let me show you what that's going to look like. Do my terrarium first. Remember, my terrarium has a hole in it. The terrarium gets two. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to push it down as far as it will go. And I'm going to come around 180 degrees opposite that hole. And I have two. So the terrarium gets two holes. Here's my lid. My lid, I'm going to come down as far as this will go. I'm going to come all the way around opposite. The lid gets two holes. And that leaves my aquarium, which gets eight holes. Now I like to put one here where the label is. And come across opposite. 
There's two. Now I got to do six more. Two of these we will tie. The other six are for air. Eight in the aquarium, two in the terrarium, two in the lid. Uh, you should have your terrarium with a hole in the bottom and two holes up top and your aquarium with no hole in the bottom and eight holes at the top. It's time now to take your small, your very small piece of braided cord and I'm going to tie a knot in the end of it. It'll end up looking like this. Okay, here's my braided cord, the small piece. I've tied a knot in it on one end and we're going to now put that in our terrarium and what I want to do is um, you might need some help with this we're going to uh, take it and from the bottom push it through to the hole so I'm going to push that through and maybe you get a partner help you by pulling it this part out hey I got it the first time you might need to use your pencil Pull it through and hopefully you made the knot large enough that I can hold this upside down, hold my terrarium upside down and it will stay attached. So this is our actual connection between our aquarium and our terrarium. Plant roots will grow down this and water will be absorbed and soaked back through. And that completes your terrarium. And what we're going to put in the terrarium are some gravel, sand, and soil. Some of those objects are abiotic, which means they've never been alive, and some have living materials in them, like the soil. So it looks like this. Here's the inside of the terrarium, which is right here. You have the wick in it. First, we're going to put some gravel, and we're not putting the aquarium gravel. I have some special aquarium gravel. We're just going to put a regular gravel in the bottom of it, uh, about a cup or so or less. Then we're going to put a little bit of sand, half a cup of sand. And then we're going to put soil. And the soil, about a cup of soil or so. I'd put more soil and less sand. And so we have gravel, which is coarse, sand, and soil. Alright, so let me show you what that's going to look like. First is my gravel, and this is some coarse uh, gravel that's not been washed. There's about a cup of it. And makes one nice layer of gravel. Next, I have my sand, and I don't know if I'll put this much sand in, maybe because the sand will go through the gravel, maybe about a, let's see how that looks, there we go, I might put a little more in there, there we go. So I got my sand and gravel, and this is a model that represents the earth with bedrock, gravel, sand, deep down. And our soil, which is added last to the top. Okay. So I might put a little more soil in there, but I think that's, that's good for now. There plenty of soil. Okay, so we have three layers. Gravel, sand, and soil. I might put just a little more soil in there. The rest of the soil I'm going to put in. I have gravel, sand, and soil. And you notice when I move this, some of the sand, a little bit of the sand might come out. Not a problem. Now, this is pretty dry. And we need, in order for this to really get going with uh, decomposers and plants, we need to add some seeds. And we also need to add some water. I have uh, three bean seeds here. And you don't have to put bean seeds. You can plant about anything you'd like in there, but I'm going to try three bean seeds, and I'm going to drop these in here. Here's the first one. I'm just going to drop it in here. There's one, two, I'm going to space them out a little bit, three. 
And you don't really want to push those down too far, just a little bit under the soil. Just cover them a little bit, not too much. There's the three bean seeds. And now it's time to add some water. And when we add water to this, and so I'm going to set this, so oh, since it has a hole in the bottom, I'm going to set this over a cup. You can do it over the trash can or someone can just help you. And I'm going to put about, oh, three quarters of a cup of water. It depends how much you have in there. I'm going to put some water in here. Gently put it in until it soaks down. And it should act just like the model of our earth. You can see it going down. You see it soaking through the sand. And eventually, I hope to see it come out the wick. And there it goes, down through the wick. And you see it dripping out right there? So I have my terrarium almost done, but I went outside and I collected some moss and some twigs. And this would be a perfect time to put pieces of moss or twigs or if you find a worm, any kind of decomposer would be excellent. Let me set this down here so I can put a little of this moss in. Now, mind you, the bean seeds will be coming up, so I don't want to cover this completely with, I might break this moss up a little bit because I don't want the bean seeds to be disrupted. So just a little bit of this moss. And so uh, you can bring some other items in, but I've got my moss going. Let's see what this looks like under the camera. Check it out. There's my moss. And... Uh, down inside my terrarium. All I need now is add some worms and maybe some isopods, some roly polies, and I'll be set. I got my terrarium set up with gravel, sand, soil, a couple beans, and even some moss. And some of you notice that the sand does drip out of the terrarium, but eventually it will stop. And if a little sand goes in your aquarium, that's all right because most sand in the whole world has been made from water weathering rock. All right, now it's time for the living materials. And what I put together for each classroom is a container that has, and I'll need you to pay attention, here's my container. Let me, I've got goldfish and I have uh, basically three types of plants. And here, can see that I put together a little living container filled with biotic materials. So what we have here is we have goldfish, which are invertebrates. We'll talk more about these in the second part of the lesson. We have uh, some plants. Where's my, here's my goldfish hiding out. Um, we have several types of plants. Plants are very important in this uh, ecosystem. And the two types I have, I have what's called hornwort. Hornwort is a, a kind of a cool plant. It's got these little bitty, here's a good example of it. It's got these little bitty, looks like horns coming up off of it. And there's some hornwort right there, see? Like horns coming up. I also have some anacris. Anacris is this one right here. Looks like little individual leaves. And you might find some hair algae. Here's some hair algae growing in there. So there's three types of plants in here. Hornwort, anacris, and hair algae. And then I see some other things that have fallen in. That's kind of cool. And there's also some invertebrates in here. Here is a snail. A snail is an invertebrate. It has an exoskeleton. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. And I also have some vertebrate animals. Here is some goldfish which have backbones. Okay, so that is basically our materials that we have here. And we're going to divide those up. Every aquarium gets one snail. Every aquarium gets one goldfish. And every aquarium gets a bunch of the plants. So you have to kind of divide up the plants. So just so we're clear, let me uh, tell you exactly what's going in these. Here we go. You should have, as far as a vertebrate, 
vertebrate animal, you have a goldfish. Invertebrate, you have a snail. Those are your animals. Now, I can't see the microbes that are there, <laughs> but they're there. Now, as far as the plants, you should have three types. One plant is called hornwort. Wart is an old word for plant, and it looks like this. It has these little things right here on it. So don't just think it's green. It is green, but I want you to be able to identify the hornwort. Another plant is called anacharis, A-N-A-C-H-A-R-I-S. And anacharis has like individual leaves going up it. Okay, so that's anacharis with an A. And then there's some hair algae, and that just looks like globs of green, green hair. We're going to put that in the aquarium. Now, some people might be surprised, a snail, but Mr. Cross on the snail climbs out of the water. Yeah, but it's a aquarium or an aquatic, aquatic snail. It belongs in the aquarium. Here's my aquarium. No hole in the bottom, I hope. And I have some, um, I have some, about three quarters of a cup of aquarium gravel. Let me put my gravel in here. Okay. There's my aquarium gravel. And I have some water, and I have cool, cold water, because these fish like cool, cold water. And I'm going to fill it up about just below the holes we punched in the top, just barely below it, maybe two centimeters below. So you should be able to see, uh, here's the, one of the holes, and I'm just below it. Now this water came right from the um, sink. So I'm going to add a product here that takes the chlorine out. Water from the sink has chloramines and chemicals and chlorine in it that will uh, actually hurt living things and kill bacteria and microbes. So I'm going to put a couple drops of this. And what that does is it will make our water safe for the fish. So it's time to put our animals into our aquarium. In our aquarium, we've put our gravel our cool, cold water, and we've treated the water with chemicals to get rid of any chloramines or chlorine that, that we put in our water so it's safe to drink. We'll start by putting in the hornwort. And there's the hornwort going to the bottom. Here's a nice piece of anacris. And here's some hair algae and a little bit more algae. Green plants are good. We like green plants. We'll learn in the next part of the lesson what green plants do for us. So there I have my plants. And here's one of my snails. Here's my invertebrate. Uh, sometimes they float, sometimes they sink. That guy's floating. And I have a large shell of one. I don't know if it's living or dead. I'm going to put it in there just in case. And I found a small one. Here's a real small one. In fact, I got a couple small ones, invertebrate snails. And then that leaves my goldfish, which is a vertebrate. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in there. And here he goes. Pretty cool. Now we're not going to feed these today. Uh, we'll wait for the next part of the lesson to learn about how to feed them and take care of your plants when we talk about the energy and how the energy flows in an ecosystem. Okay, we've got our three parts ready. The aquarium, the terrarium, and the lid. And now we need to tie them all together. And to do that, we're going to use that long piece of string. And it looks like this. We're going to start with the aquarium. 
And what I need to do is find a place, okay, I like it right about here where the label is. I have a hole there. I'm going to pull this through, and I'm going to tie it around into a knot. See how it went through? And I tied a knot, and I'm going to pull it through like this again, and double it up. And that looks like this. Okay, with the end off. Make sure it's a nice strong tie. Okay? Now, I'm going to set the terrarium on top of here. Okay? And my terrarium fits nicely because we cut this on the shoulder. All right, the next step. I'm going to come from the outside and I'm going to put it in to the hole up here like I'm sewing it from the outside in. And you can see that. Okay. On the outside in. Let me show you a better look on that. Tied on the outside in. Now I'm going to take my lid and go from the inside of the lid out and pull it through. Kind of like you're sewing. And then I'm going to go across the top of the lid. Across the top of the lid. And go from the outside and push it in. That's going to be my handle. All right. Now I'm going to rotate this around to the other side, opposite of where I tied the knot. Now I'm going to go from the inside and come out of the terrarium. And then all I got to do is tie it onto the aquarium. So I'm going to remove my terrarium. And make the same one knot and the same two knot. Okay. And so on both sides, I end up having it a nice knot that looks like this on that side and one on the other. And I should be able to put these back together. My terrarium. With the wick in here, fits on top of there. And if I did this correctly, I should be able to lift the entire thing up, the aqua terra column. It's ready now for your use and your study, because we have the aquarium here at the bottom, the terrarium and the lid at the top. So, i am uh, pretty been pretty successful with this, and so will you. You have here your aqua terra column, a model that you can use to study ecosystems. In the second part of this lesson, we'll investigate how you use this model to learn more about the natural world around you.